Hello everyone, I cordially welcome you all to another video from the Python tutorial series and in this video we are going to get introduced to the world of object oriented programming using Python. So without any delay, let's get started. Every computer programming language can be classified under two heads. They are procedural programming language and object oriented programming language. In procedural programming paradigm, the focus is on how to get the task done. The workflow of the code is mainly based around accomplishing the task. Example include C programming language. So if any of you is having some knowledge in C programming, you will know that in C we don't have concepts of class and objects. Okay, We basically write a series of instructions that get executed and returns us a result. Okay. And in C, we follow a top-down approach that the code starts from top and executes until the bottom is hit. Okay. And when any function is called, the control goes to the function. Otherwise, we often see a serial flow. But in object-oriented programming language, the main focus is on the data and its security. Object-oriented programming mainly focuses on what objects exist in our code and how it access the data and how the data is protected from any external access. Okay. Example includes Java, Python. So in case of object oriented programming, we don't have that procedural method. Our code is basically written surrounding the objects, how one object interact with the other and how the methods are called using each of the invoking objects and object oriented programming is highly used in the development of production grade application. And as I have already said, Python and Java are the two most popular object oriented programming language. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Advantages of object oriented programming. It helps us to write clean code which resembles a real world problem solution. Thus object oriented programming helps us to solve real world problems in much easier way. In the next video, we will learn about the four pillars of object oriented programming. So if you have idea about those four pillars, you can basically construct a programming problem to a real world problem and you can solve it. Point number two, it boosts easy maintenance, reusability and modification of the existing code base. So in case of object oriented programming, the code is loosely coupled. So maintenance, reusability and modification is pretty easy. Point number three, it gives our code a better modular approach. Thus, partial updates are easy to do. In other hand, modularity helps us to add or improvise existing functionalities and check their dependencies in much easier way. The last but not the least, frameworks are built around the object oriented programming structure, which helps us to render any component into our code base without writing the entire structure of the framework. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Fundamentals of object oriented programming. Object oriented programming in Python focuses mainly on the data and objects and how the objects access the data and how secure the data is. The concept of class and object serves as the fundamental for learning object oriented programming. So as I have already said, the main difference of object oriented programming from procedural oriented programming is that in object oriented programming, the code is written, putting the main focus on data and objects and how the objects access the data. Okay. And the core pillar of object oriented programming are the concepts of class and objects. Classes are basically the blueprints for creating objects. They decide and regulate state and behavior of the objects. A class decides what member variables and methods the objects will have and how they will behave. So you can say class are basically the blueprints. They are not the real world material. Basically class helps you to create objects and dictates what member methods and member variables those objects will contain. Okay. Objects are said to be the instances of a class. As the class is a conceptual blueprint, objects are its real world implementation. Objects contain all the member variables and methods prescribed by the class and during the creation of these objects, the values are instantiated. Okay. So as I have already said, objects are the real world materials and classes are basically the conceptual blueprints. Let's go to the next slide. 
So we have done enough of theory as of now. Let's go to VS Code and understand by a simple example how we write classes and create objects out of it. So let's go. Welcome to VS Code. Here now you will see how we create classes in Python. So first of all, I have created a Python file 21.py. You can name it anything as you want. Thereafter, we are going to create a class. And how do we do that? We write class keyword thereafter the name of the class followed by a pair of parentheses. And as I have already said in one of our previous videos that in Python, we don't write braces for scoping. We write colons followed by indentation. And that basically describes the scope of the code or the variable. Okay. Thereafter, we create a method, which is basically a function. We specify def. Thereafter, we write the name of the function. And remember one thing, every method within a class in Python will contain a variable that points to the invoking object. Okay. Here, mostly you will see we write self. But if you are coming from Java background, you will know here we write this. So both are valid here. I prefer to go with self as of now. So def wish morning self. Now here self points to the invoking object. And when this method will be invoked, we print good morning on the terminal. Okay. Now how do we create objects out of classes? Here we write my wish equal to wish and then followed by a pair of parentheses. This means we are basically calling the constructor of this wish class and that basically returns an instance and which gets stored in this my wish variable. Okay. If you are not sure what are constructors, so constructors basically help you to create instance of a class. Even if you don't write any constructor, a default constructor does exist, which creates an instance of the class. But again, it is possible to, for you to override the constructors and create your own constructor. And this one we will learn in the next video. Okay. Finally, how do we call methods from within the instance of a class? We write my wish, that is the instance of that wish class dot and then the name of the method followed by a pair of parentheses. So how can we achieve that? As I have said, the class dictates what member methods and member variables will be present in the instance. So as my wish is an instance of this wish class, so my wish will definitely contain this wish morning method. Okay. And how can we call it? We basically use the dot access specifier to call a method from within an instance. And when this code will execute, you will see good morning in the terminal. Okay. Let's run our code. We will open the terminal and write python 21.py. And as soon as we run this code, we see good morning on the terminal. Okay. So I hope now you are clear with the concept. If you have any doubt, I will post the link of our blog in the description section below. You can go and check it out. So let's go back to our presentation. This is all for this video. I hope you found this video informative. In case you like the video, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel as that will highly motivate us to bring more videos in future. For any queries, doubts, suggestions or feedback, feel free to post them in the comment section. We are going to reply. So thank you for now. See you in the next video. Bye.